Like many supporters, my postcode dictated the club I support. And unfortunately, that particular postcode hasn't granted me annual top four finishes, regular pushes for promotion or record signings. Not yet, anyway. Like many supporters, I see the widening gap by looking up. And I see a season that's competitively over well before its final game. Luckily, the brilliance we show when there's nothing to play for allows me to dream for next season. Up until the opening day defeat of next season, of course. And like many supporters, I hope my club's fortunes will change. And that hope grows, thanks to Danish team FC Micheland, who are marching to the beat of a different drum. But it wasn't always that way for the club. When we enter something, we want to be the best. So be runner-up twice, or bronze medal uh, four times, or second in four cup finals. That was very tough to be a supporter. Well, it's always been you know, a lot of ups and downs when, when supporting Mitchell. And so one season we would uh, be second or third in the league, and that's quite a good season. Next year, sixth or seventh. We came very close to winning the league, uh, and uh, we lost uh, three very important games in a row. Uh, the championship collapsed, uh, the second place with the Champions League qualifying uh, was lost, and uh, we're left behind with a um, usual third. But then last season it all changed. To win the league, uh, almost said it's the best thing that's happened to me in my life, but I'm also a father, so it would uh, <laughs> I have to put my daughter's birth over that. But it came close. We had a great season, won almost all our games at home. But to be honest, I didn't believe in this before it actually happened. I can still feel it in my body. It was uh, it was a huge game, uh, and I've never seen uh, that many uh, big tattooed people uh, hugging each other uh, with the uh, happy tears in their eyes. This is something that that people can feel. It's not like a long distance uh, relationship to, let's say, Chelsea FC or FC Barcelona. This is something they can experience themselves. I see a lot more jerseys in the streets, a lot more streamers and cars and uh, people are proud, proud to be a fan of FC Midtjylland. The change of fortune happened one year ago, I guess, uh, when uh, Matthew Benham uh, came into our knowledge. If Matthew Benham hadn't come, uh, I'm pretty sure that FC Midtjylland uh, has gone broke. Publicity shy Matthew Benham is the owner and lifelong fan of Brentford Football Club. In 2014, he bought Danish Superliga team FC Micheland. Benham made his millions from beating the gambling system on football matches, and his approach to running his two football clubs is the same as his approach to gambling, analytics. The system Benham used is a closely guarded secret, but in general, and in extremely simple terms, Mr Benham was able to make his money by calculating his own odds based on data he collected on teams. If the bookmaker's odds and his own odds were considerably different and he stood to benefit from that difference, then he would place a bet. All of this collected data is used to create metrics that will tell you something about the team's strengths or weaknesses. Importantly, these metrics do not assume that goals accurately reflect how good a team is. Think of the times you've watched your team dominate for 90 minutes and not score, only for the opposition to pinch one in the last minute and win. Goals are a bad reflection of a team's quality and therefore a bad predictor of results. So analysts need stats that strip out randomness and luck and predict future performance more accurately. One of many such stats is the amount of shots a team creates and concedes. This is known as the expected goals method. For example, this has happened thousands of times in the history of football. The amount of goals scored and attempts missed are added up and divided by the total number of shots taken. This creates a conversion rate for a particular shot expressed as expected goals. Then, for a whole match, take the chances created away from the chances conceded and you have the net expected goals expressed as a number. This gives an analyst metrics on teams to work with and a good indication of that team's quality. The team with the higher average net expected goals is the favourite to win. Benham's introduction to FC Michelin was through Rasmus Ankerson, former FC Michelin Academy coach and now chairman of FC Michelin and co-director of football at Brentford FC. I met Matthew um, a few years ago. Um, he had read my book and we met at the Brentford's training ground at Jersey Road in London. And um, at the time Brentford was third in the League One 
Uh, there was a couple of games to go and I said to him, uh, so do you think you're going to promote? And I, when you ask that question, you expect to get a, an emotional yes or an emotional no for, for a football owner. Uh, but he just looked at me, uh, very rational, and then he said, uh, at the moment there's 42.3% chance we will promote. And at that moment I knew that here was a guy that was thinking very different about football than I had ever experienced before. Benham was thinking differently about football and began turning those thoughts into actions with impressive results both at FC Michelin and at Brentford. Since he became owner of Brentford in 2012, the club's fortunes had changed dramatically. In 2014, they were promoted from League One. In their first season in the Championship, they reached the playoffs. The West London underdogs are finally having their day. Life as a Brentford fan over the last 20 years has really seen, it's been a roller coaster ride, there's absolutely no way, other way of describing it to be honest. Someone wrote a book about Rochdale a few years ago called Life Sentence. That's something that I would apply to Brentford too. We've been to five finals, you know, um, three, uh, three Wembley, two at Cardiff, we've lost them all. We've been to eight playoffs, we've lost them all. We've had some cracking times but they're vastly outnumbered by the miserable times. I've seen some turgid mediocre football down here. We've gone from rattling buckets trying to trying to survive to being on the cusp of being in the Premier League and, and that not being you know a wild hope, you know, the, the building blocks have been put into place. Last season I think was definitely the best season I've I've ever had down here. I say ninety two was a great season but the quality of football we've seen down here has just been phenomenal. You just have to watch what's going on and you can see that there is something different. You know, someone described us as the poster boys of, of the move towards analytics. We think there are big inefficiencies in football in general, uh, not only English football, but football in general. And, um, and we got to try and exploit some of those inefficiencies. Lots of innovation in business and, and football it doesn't come from the, the, the clubs with the most money. Because, you know, if you can, if you can win by outspending the competitors, why would you have to think different? Nothing is left to chance, and this is all about trying to ensure that margins are minimised, trying to ensure that we can perform to our best and take advantage of everything that we can. Brentford said, look, we weren't very good at free kicks last season, so let's bring in somebody who's a fantastic free kick coach to just focus on that area. So they've got a free kick coach, They've got a free kick technique coach, so somebody to teach them how to kick the ball about spinning it in the right way and dipping and all that kind of stuff. They've got um, philosophy, uh, football philosophy, which is the philosophy of the club from, from under nines all the way through. All these different people at the club specialising to make sure that the players come out and are, and are the best that they can be. It's obvious the type of players we're bringing in that we're doing things differently. And I used to have a lot of fun trying to guess who we were going to sign. I haven't got a clue who we're signing anymore, and more importantly, I haven't heard of most of them. We think there are an inefficiency in the, the transfer market. Uh, we think uh, lots of clubs pay um, too much money for players that are uh, low quality, and uh, we think we got some tools that will be make us able to um, evaluate teams and uh, players uh, much more accurately. Um, with data than uh, the human eye is able to do. Remember, the expected goals method strips luck and randomness out of football and provides the analyst with a clear indication of a team or player's strengths and weaknesses. Plus, statistical models based on the expected goals method enables analysts to rank European clubs as though they all play together in one big league. So, whether the team plays in the Premier League or in the second tier of Spanish football, they can all be displayed in one big table and positioned with all their luck and randomness removed. If a team in the lower European leagues are sitting high up in this calculated league, then the players in this team are worth checking out, as you could pick yourself up a high-quality, unknown player at rock-bottom prices. This is exactly what happened with Tim Sparv. He was playing in the German second division for a team that the statistical model ranked as playing English Premier League level football. FC Micheland identified Sparv as one of their key players and decided to buy him. Matthew and Rasmus' uh, way of football is hard to describe as a fan, but we understand it's like a Game Boy. Um, they're punching in some numbers or so, and uh, out come uh, Tim Spall. <laughs> Andre Gray, top scorer last season, he was identified by stats. Hotter, who's a stats player. Um, Moses Odebaju, who's the England under 20 player as well, he's identified by stats as well. 
I was at a friendly game uh, last season and they were using this uh, mathematical model uh, that makes statistics of, of the players and I saw it uh, on, a, on a screen and I understood nothing of it. <laughs> so uh, probably that's what most people think, they don't really know what this is. And I think that's part of it. It has to stay kind of a secret. I don't know if this mathematical modelling will actually completely level the playing field, because clubs like ours can't afford to make too many expensive mistakes, where you've, you've got clubs that have got more financial clout, clubs that can afford to make more mistakes than we can. And to be honest with you, I hope it's not a field leveller, because I want it to be our little secret. It's our ball, we don't want anyone to play with it, and hopefully it will make us champions of Europe, but no one will know how we've done it. The model that we are using is uh, something that could be applied in, in any country. It's just a different way of thinking about football and trying to be, trying to be different, trying to do uh, things um, unconventionally. I think Midtjylland's approach potentially give hope to football fans in terms of uh, that it is possible to win by working harder, by thinking different, by um, taking some risk. Hopefully, um, we, we, we can give uh, fans around the world optimism that um, Life is too short for to be a, a mid-table team. <laughs> Next season is going to be a big season for Brentford. We fell just short in the playoffs. Um, we are aware of where our shortcomings are and they're, they're, they're looking to, to resolve that. I still think with the quality and the calibre of players that have been brought in, our chances of promotion are pretty good. But if you ask me for a number, I'll probably say 70%. Yeah, I'll say there's about an 80% chance of us getting promoted next season, but only because I don't want to say 100 because I'll curse it. I think the chance of Brentford going up this season are about 50%. 37.9333% recurring. I would say Midtjylland's chance of, of winning the league, 50%. 34%. <laughs> yeah, uh, 44%. 99%. Oh, we, have, we have acquired uh, accurate prediction for what the chances are for Midtjylland winning the league again and also for Brentford going into the Premier League but uh, I think uh, we would rather keep that to ourselves. <laughs>